Can we talk about the girl side first? Because you said yeah. there's there's four tra female traits, right? So why do obviously I, as a guy, I kind of know why. Like, oh, I can save her, right? But but why? But why the hell do 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 guys end up? I mean, are are guys? Because it seems like a kind of a foolish thing, right? So obviously, got girls attracted to the bad boy characteristic, right? But then you have also guys falling for this kind of a Captain Save a Ho sort yeah. of a thing and stuff. Like, is it are they both just like terrible strategies in terms of like? Versus like they just in finding someone with a good character, but that may not be as sexy as like because the the bad boy may be showing more of the uh, good characteristics with one really bad one with a, with a certain character. You know, there's flaw. a lot of mystery with the bad boy because you don't know. It's like right. riding a roller coaster, and that's exciting. It gives you the tingles, <laughs> and that there's something to that. I mean, there is a evolutionary reason that that's very attractive because it also, uh, you know, not to delve too much into evolutionary psychology, but there's something about being able to protect, yeah. you know, and fight off. The, I mean, you have to have a competent man. And part of having a dominant masculine presence is being able to dominate other men in, right. in the arena of your choosing or in a contextual fashion. You don't have to even be completely physical. So let's say you were disabled. Uh, but if you were a contextual master in over your mind and your ability to do business, that's good enough. And that's why sometimes you can see a guy that's not very physically attractive. And he's with what looks like a 10 to you. He's surrounded by beautiful women. And it puzzles guys sometimes because they put so much emphasis on it. But, uh, you know, for a woman, of course, attractiveness, physicality is very important. But it moves beyond that pretty quickly once she starts looking for a relationship. Right. If it's that quick term, you know, quick sex, then yeah, it's alpha, something else. Beta bucks, alpha that. fucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. then it, it changes from that pretty darn quickly, you know. But when it comes to the, 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 the female characteristics that men, I, I know I just listed in the very back, I really focus on masculine behaviors and traits. Uh, I think it's, it's really important that we have those. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously fit, feminine, you know, friendly, yeah. agreeable, deference to her man. Uh, so uh, sexual strength for others. But her man, you know, right. sexual release for a man, things like that. Um, you won't find you'll you'll find you'll find that it's interesting to go through that list and see what I've been able to gather. There's some research behind it. I did some questionnaires, so it's interesting what people say. Nice. So, yeah, I don't have them all memorized because there's like 35 <laughs> of them on there. There's a lot of them, yeah. But uh, it's pretty interesting. So, but that's really not the bulk of the book. The book is about you know why we're where we're at mm. in the masculinity crisis. We can all look around and see it. We got an incel problem. We got men that last I looked in the GSS survey, which I show in the book, 30% sexless so, before age 30. Wow. Wait, now, say, wait, say, wait, wait, say that again. So 30% of males are sexless? Sexless are virgins within a year that uh, age 30 and below for men. They had no wow. sex in the no. last year or they're virgins. They're virgins or they've, they've been trying and just nothing's been happening for, for at least a year. They're either wow. virgins for their whole life or they they have not had sex with any. That's worse than the been. unemployment rate. <laughs> now, for what it was just 10 years prior was 11 and 12 percent. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're talking about a tripling in 10 years? Yeah. A tripling. Yep. Wow. And then I also talk about in there, well, why? And there's some speculation that I put in there. We know that testosterone for men has fallen in the last 50 years by 45%. And the, is that in the last 10 or 20? No, it's like the last 50 years. Last 50 oh, years. Well, cool. since 1980. Okay? okay, since they've been really yeah. tracking it. So yeah. since they've been tracking it. And that's tens of thousands of men. And there's even a more scary side to this because it's a multivaried problem. And it might couple into masculinity and how men operate and behave in societies and by themselves. But you realize that sperm counts have fallen 50% in like 45 years as well. It's that makes it's, sense. It's correlated right along and it's linear. It is it's trackable year to year to year across Western Europe and America. There's a book on it called um, uh, The Countdown. Hmm. Uh, and I think I believe it's by Dr. Shauna Thompson. I could be wrong on the name, yeah. but check me on that. But I quote that in there and I show her studies and it's pretty shocking because if you straight line that just until 2040, all right, it's unrecoverable. 
There's what? no sperm left. What? <laughs> it's if you straight line it, you hit zero at 24. So, so, so it's got to level out somewhere, is what I'm saying. Yes, it bottom out. But yeah. it is it is pretty interesting as the topic of the book for this academic woman who actually leans left to look at this. And then I pose the question, you know, if, if that's the case, uh, mm. and that coupled with you know, the advent of toxic masculinity, right? The social pressures with changing our language to say vulnerability is strength, which we know it's not right. all of these pressures hitting young men. And the very people that have put these pressures on them now say, man up to our young boys. We'll just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? Man up. Well, you know, they've been suppressed long enough and we got, we're, we're even getting on the verge at least socially of making uh masculinity the red letter you yeah. know being the red letter uh the american psychological association now lists masculine behaviors as actually toxic <laughs> and i list those in the book there's quite a few it's listed on their website and um it's pretty amazing to see what they they list it's uh being showing aggression of any type is listed as toxic of course and sometimes uh, you of have course. to you yeah. know, you have to be that way. Uh, they also listed as not being a feminine ally as a masculine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a or toxic believing trait. in, yeah. or be <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty strange to read it. It's definitely something you would, uh, you'll be surprised at looking at, but that is actually the position of all the psychologists that belong and practice psychology out of the APA the league now right. for masculinity. So, there is a crisis of masculinity and you can actually see, you know, that with our younger men right now, they're quite effeminate. Yeah. Uh, you can look at pictures, effeminate, vastly overweight, mm -hmm. uninterested in ambition. They're staying at home longer. Yep. They really are. I mean, they're staying at home longer. Um, and I talk a little bit about the crisis of, you know, single motherhood is not a good outcome oh. for a lot of these guys. Uh, and you need to have a man that understands masculinity to really transfer it to the boys. And that's what I'm hoping is the book can help stimulate that.